Well, today we're going to talk about a topic that I think you're all going to be very interested in. It's that your habits control you. What I've come to understand is that most of our lives are run by the habits that we have. I don't know if you realize it, but your habits are controlling you. Think about this. In the morning, let's assume you take a shower. If you go in the shower, what is the first thing you do? I know for me, it's I take that bar of soap, I put it in my left armpit, and I go from there. And I was aware that that's what I do every time. Then I started thinking about what other habits do I've got? Do you notice that when you go into an amusement park or something like that, that you always go to the right? You go, whoa. So think about all the other habits that are there. And guess what? They're controlling your life experience. So I want to explore this idea of habits and how they're good, how they may not be good, how they can serve us, or how they may not serve us. You see, one of the things about spirituality, I believe that the spiritual path we're on is simply to become more aware. And to become more aware is to become a conscious creator. You see, when we become more aware, we understand there is a power in us that responds to the nature of who we are, and we can use that power consciously, or that power can be used unconsciously. And so those unconscious habits that we've got are using that creative power in an unconscious way, creating our experience, and we wonder why we're having that experience. Think about this. You may have an unconscious habit simply because you are raised by your mom and your dad and you're doing things the way your mom and your dad did them and not realizing that the habit that you blindly accepted from mom and dad is creating the exact experience of what your mom and dad had. Whether it's their relationship, whether it's how they are in the, the workplace, whether it's how they use money, whether it's how they viewed health, but you've developed their conscious habits. Think about the habit of my parents. Lee, finish all the food on your plate. Always finish the food on your plate. So I built a habit. I would clean my plate off. And then all of a sudden I start saying as I got older, wait a second. I go to a restaurant, the plates that we have, the size of the portions in the United States, they're huge. Started gaining weight. I said, wait a second. I have to choose how much I eat. I had to break the habit. So when we understand that to become aware is to become a conscious creator, we realize that our ability to create increases in direct proportion to our acquisition of new knowledge. The more aware we become, the more knowledgeable we become, the more knowledge we have, the more that we can create. Because we realize we have that probability. The possibility exists that we can do that. And you see, once we understand the creative process, we have the ability to test it and see how it works in our lives. This is truly the, that uh, experimental stage of discovering the power in you, is that when you understand that your beliefs create, you say, oh, I understand that. Intellectually, I understand that. The true scientist, the true religious or spiritual scientist is one who takes that idea and says, okay, I'm going to build this new belief and I'm going to test it. I'm going to see if this new belief works and works directly in my life in a way that I can measure it. Because if I can't measure it, I'll fool myself. That's one of the, why using money as a great way of testing it is um, a far superior than to just about anything else because you can measure money. You can't lie about money. The other thing you can do is you can use your health. I use this power as I wrote about in my book to heal myself of a brain tumor. I had a brain tumor and I used the powers that were, if, were within me and I created that brain tumor disappearing. It took time. It took a year. But in one year, that tumor was gone. And here's the key thing. If I can do it, if anyone can do it, you can do it. But you've got to use it. 
You've got to test these powers that are within you and realize that the knowledge that we have, our knowledge is acquired by observation, experience, and reflection. So we observe someone. You may be observing me. And you may be observing me doing something and seeing me get a result. Hmm. Okay. So then you take it into yourself and you say, okay, I watched the pattern that Lee used. I'm going to emulate that pattern. And as you emulate it, you create an experience. Then after you've had that experience, you reflect and said, okay, this is what I did based on what I observed. This is the experience that's been reflected back to me. Is this what I want? Or do I need to adjust it now? And so with every time we do that, in every new event, in every new situation, our knowledge increases. And when our knowledge increases, our ability to create increases. Through using our mind, we come to understand that what we manifest is a reflection of our thoughts, words, mental pictures, feelings, and actions. How do you see yourself in your life? What does it feel like to be in that life as you? What does it sound like when you're talking about that life? What, do you, what are you thinking about if you're doing that, experiencing what you desire? And what type of actions are you taking? Really great thing. So as I reflected on being a spiritual teacher, my thoughts are always about seeing the balance in life. My words are about love, acceptance, empathy, kindness. I picture myself interacting with people as I do. Now, I'm not a softy. I'm not a, oh, are you feeling this, that? That's not me. I'm a very direct communicator. But I visualize that when I'm speaking directly to someone, I'm having the impact of waking them up to something greater in them. And I actually do that. I act on that. And I do that, first off, I do it with myself. Then I test it with my wife because we have agreements that we can do that with each other because we're always talking about raising each other up, growing and supporting each other as we move into a higher level of awareness. You see, so when I started a brief moment ago talking about using our mind, it's also the realization that we're using our mind, which is a part of the infinite mind, which created all things. So realize that when we look at the teachings of the science of mind, we understand there is one mind. That mind is God's mind. That mind is infinite. That mind is everywhere present. That mind is perfect. That mind is all powerful. And that my mind is a point of consciousness within that all mind. Therefore, the qualities of the all mind are the same qualities that I can use. So when I'm using my mind, I'm actually using the great mind that created everything. All I've come to understand is that there is a power, a way of using that mind that will be reflected in my life. And here's the key thing. Not just my life, in anyone's life who chooses to use that power. And so it is then we conclude that our power to create is now based on our habits of thinking. Because Think about our day. How often are you really conscious of the words you speak, of the feelings you have, of the thoughts that go through your mind, of the actions you take? Very, very small percentage. So, what's driving the others? Your habits of thinking. So what we're doing here is we're coming down, we're breaking it down to where we see, wait a second, habits. They can be lead us toward our goal. They can lead us away from our goal. But the key thing, it's up to us to change or keep 
or build new habits of thinking. Who we are is a reflection of what we think about most. Think about that. What do you think about most when it comes to money? What do you think about most when it comes to health? What do you think about most when it comes to career? What do you think about most when it comes to relationships? What do you think about most when you think about yourself, who you are, where you are, and where your life is going? Do you have habits of thinking that support the highest image of you? That's the key to creation. Because once we understand that we're a reflection of what we think about most, then we can then conclude that if we desire to change our life experience, we must first and foremost change our habits of thinking. That's right. We have to create new habits. Our work is to change the mental image we have of ourselves in reference to what we desire to experience. And we do that with habits. It's not easy to change our habits because our habits are difficult to change because they're hardwired into our brain. Think about that. We've got all these neural connectors Millions and trillions of billions of neural connectors in our brain. And when we think something over and over and over and over and over again, it wires. Those connectors connect inside and they become solid connections. And so what we have to do is we have to rewire our brain. And so it takes time to build that new habit of thinking. But as we keep, we don't try to unwire the patterns in the past. We create new wiring in our brain and that requires repetition. It requires how we think, feel, and act on a persistent, consistent basis keeps our habits in place or it changes them. So if we want a new habit, we've got to think the new thoughts, feel the new thoughts, act on the new thoughts. We must be persistent and consistent on them until we build a habit so that that, that thought process is an unconscious one. We don't even have to think about it. I built a habit of thinking about my body. It's 185 pounds. It's strong. It's got endurance. It's flexible. It's how I view my body. It also is how I act when I go to the gym, when I hike, when I'm doing things. It's all based on that habit of thinking. So people are saying, Lee, how do I change my habits? I don't know how to do it. I'm going to tell you this. It's as simple as just start doing things differently than you're currently doing them. Think about this. You're driving from your, from your home to the grocery store. Do you take the same route every time? When you go to, the gro when you go to church, do you take the same route? When you go to work, do you take the same Alter, go a different route, break the habit. Instead of taking that bar of soap every day and taking it into the, the left armpit, take it in the other hand, go to the right armpit, or maybe get the shampoo out. Do something different. Start creating a habit of never doing things the same way. Little things like that add up. Do you put your right shoe on first before you put your left shoe? I don't know. Think about that. Here's one. When you go into a, an event, we went to an event here in town where they had um, photographs, big, huge photographs of the work of Michael Angelo, Michael D'Angelo Angelo on um, the Sistine Chapel. And it said, go to the right, go to the right. And I just went to the left. And Gene goes, where are you going? And I said, follow me. Guess what? I went to the left. There were no crowds. There was a huge crowd going to the right. I had a great experience. I followed my own path. That's what I'm telling you right now. 
It's up to you to follow your own path. Stop letting everyone else on the planet determine the path that you follow. Don't fall into the habit of getting into their habits. You create habits that service you. Sometimes I go, I go along with the crowd. A lot of times I go against the crowd because guess what? If you do what everyone else does, if you have the habits of everybody else, you're going to have an average experience. Do you want an average experience? Do you? I don't. I would be bored to death having an average experience. People always say to me, Lee, you're weird. And I just say, thank you. Because here's what I've come to understand. We were born unique. We were born and meant to be unique. I never ever want to give that up because when I stop being unique, my life no longer has meaning. There's no juice in it. When you're doing what your heart desires to do in a way that uniquely is you, you've got a juice going through you. It's an energy and people will go, whoa. They actually want to be around you because you're not dead. You're not a walking zombie. We don't have to wait for the zombie apocalypse. All you got to do is look around the people whose habits are controlling them. My challenge to you is for you to create habits that support the image that you choose for you to be. It's all about conscious living. Our job is to decide if a habit is serving us. And if it's not, we must do the work to install a new habit by adjusting how we think, speak, feel, and act, and hold on to that until that new desired habit is created and it's now in our subconscious that we don't have to think about it. And once we build one new habit, focus on one, then we can go and build a second habit and get that into the subconscious mind, and then a third. And then we're constantly creating new by building new habits of thinking and being in the world. And it doesn't mean that once we create a new habit, we don't adjust it, because as we become more, we want to become even more than that. And that may mean we have to adjust that image. We may have to adjust those thoughts, those feelings, those actions. But when you control your habits, you are the master of your destiny. Think about that. Who do you want to run your life? Do you want an average life? Or do you want an incredible you life? That's right. A life that you choose so that when you die, you look at the world and you say, yeah, you pull a Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. Create a great week. The power is in you. Start now.